the other crosses, there were people who died. I mean, it's just a real dangerous curve, especially when it's wet. But this lady came around this curve too fast and spun around, went down in Bayham, and I just happened to see it driving in. That's in the county I work for the city, and I don't even listen. I don't have county channels to listen to. Chris, work on that kind of <laughs> But um, um, so I'm just you know minding my own business and, and heading to, to do chapel, thinking about you know, what I'm going to be saying to these scary group of seventh graders. And um, I looked down and here's this car. And I, I saw this stop car, turn the lights on, tell dispatch, say, hey, the county sitting up here. And I get to talk to this lady. She sat down in there for 30 minutes. 30 minutes. I said, you didn't get called? Well, I called my husband. And I assumed that he'd be the one calling the police. And I didn't really know where I was anyway. Again, know where you are. Don't let somebody else call the police for you. I don't care if, we, if the dispatch gets 15 phone calls on one wreck. They've got the phone lines. Call anyway. Because they're going to ask how many people are involved in the crash. They're going to ask how many vehicles, what kind of vehicle you're at. You're in. Yes, ma'am. What do you do when your husband says, oh, that's already been called into dispatch. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dispatcher, so I'll let you two discuss on the way. <laughs> this is marriage counseling. Not one bit. <laughs> I'm a happily married person, but I'm not going to tell you my secrets. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, so she sat there for 30 minutes before I, and I just happened to drive by. It was down the little ravine, and had I not been paying attention, uh, then I wouldn't have seen her because she was down. And the only reason I uh, noticed it is because I saw that there was a little bit of mud track going across the street, and I thought, well, that was that So that was the only way I saw her down there. <sighs> safely drive. Please drive safely. You know the rules of the road. For the most part, if you see emergency vehicle coming up behind you, what do you do? Pull over, okay? Which way do you pull over? To the right. Why? Because we're trained to pass you on the left. If you pull to the left and I try to pass you on the left, we're going to have a crash. I'm going to know where I'm at, do you? Um, but <laughs> please don't make me go into oncoming traffic to pass you because your uneducated self decided to pull over to the left, okay? I am trained to pass you on the left. When you're on the interstate, where are you pass somebody? You're supposed to. In the left. Never pass on the right. Um, but if you see an emergency vehicle coming up behind you, scoot to the right. Um, if you're on a surface street, you're supposed to stop. If you're on a highway, like the interstate, please don't stop. Use common sense. Use the rules of the road. Don't drive too fast. Don't drive too slow. Uh, what's the speed limit on the interstates in Chattanooga? 55. Anybody ever driven 55 on the interstate in Chattanooga? Nope. Nope. I did without saying a prayer first. And I, <laughs> this is hard for me to say, but if you have to drive above the speed limit to drive with the traffic, that's actually safer than driving too slow. Because you're going to have these, these hoodlums coming up behind you doing the 75, 80, 90. 127 miles an hour, and they're going to hit you in the back because they don't have enough time to scoot over. Um, that's their own doing, yes. But what's my concern? Don't let you become a victim of a tragic car crash. Um, so, if they blow up the traffic, anybody ever done 55 miles an hour in Atlanta? I don't think you can do 55 miles an hour on surface streets in Atlanta with speed limits 25 through the school zones. You have to stay with the flow of traffic. That's actually safer. For every 10 miles an hour, how much space are you supposed to leave in between? Car lane. Ish. <laughs> leave a safe distance. They've actually stopped saying leave 10 miles or leave 10 whatever. Drive a safe distance. You know your reaction time. Everybody's reaction time is different. Actually, the older you get, the, the longer your reaction time is. From the time you see a threat, the time you perceive the threat, the time that your brain processes that and says, there's a threat, and sends a message down to your foot, says, take your foot off the gas pedal, you put it on the brake, and time your foot pushes the brake, sometimes that can be a second and a half. The faster you're traveling, that second and a half can sometimes be an entire football field. So, keep a safe distance. Um, distracted driving, we've already talked about that. And being prepared. How many of you have a medical kit in your vehicle? 
Three of us. Um, how many of you have a blanket in your vehicle? A few more. Um, how many of you have a fire extinguisher in your vehicle? Again, I'm just a nerd, I guess. But these are things you might want to think about. Typically, you're not going to get stranded uh, in an Alaskan highway, unless you're obviously going to Alaska, and you're not going to need a blanket to spend the night. Uh, that's back before the days of cell phones. Uh, if you have a cell phone, make sure it's fully charged. If you're driving, make sure you have uh, enough gas. If you get below a, a quarter of a tank, stop and fill up. If you're traveling on the interstates, have more than just a quarter of a tank. Because you never know. Here again, Atlanta, or Chattanooga. You know Chattanooga is an actual old Indian word? That means lots of traffic. <laughs> um, but you, know, you never know when you're going to come across lots of traffic in Chattanooga. Or terrible traffic is what Atlanta means in the old Indian word in Atlanta. You, know, you never know when you're going to come across these things. So, be prepared for whatever the type of situation may be. Have enough gas. Keep your cell phone charged. Uh, if you're not playing on your cell phone, then it shouldn't worry about you know, losing the charge. Don't be distracted by your GPS. Don't be distracted by a text message coming in. Don't be distracted by your seven-year-old kid in the back seat who just came out of the car seat. Because you're driving a 3,000 pound weapon. And one thing I learned growing up when Dad was teaching me to drive, he said, Kyle, I have the utmost confidence in your your abilities. I don't have utmost confidence in everybody else's abilities. Drive for the other person. If you see them, like on the way here, actually, uh, come down Highway 58, there's a person that pulled past that little white line. You know what that white line's for? You stop behind that white line. They pulled a car and a half past that white line there at Webb Road, and that much of their vehicle sticking out in the intersection. Um, so, where are they going to pull out? Where are they going to back up? What are they, they going to do? I didn't know, so I scooted over to the left lane and uh, went on past. Drive for the other person. Not everybody is a good driver, in case you were unaware of that. All right, any questions on that one? Any comments? The next section is going to be safety in public. Uh, we're going to be spending a little bit more time on this one. This is the biggest uh, slideshow presentation, but there's also pictures in this one and two YouTube videos. Hurrah! Um, by the way, there's YouTube videos in this one. Uh, all you gotta do is just click on it, it should open up and play, and then when it's over, we'll watch the second one. Is that be okay? Cool. Um, so, roadside safety make sure you follow the rules of the road, number one, and just be prepared. Pre plan for the situation you're going to be in. If the vehicle in front of you is going to suddenly stop, are you going to be so close to them that you can't suddenly stop? No. If it's raining, are you going to leave more distance? Absolutely. If it's snowing and icy, are you going to leave more distance? Hopefully you'll be in a recliner. But if you're driving, then yes, leave even more distance. Leave enough time to prepare. Safety in public. <coughs> and this is where I deal in my daily career. Uh, keeping the public safe. First off, picking the right spot. Um, when you go to a gas station, uh, you, next one, next one, there you go, and we're one more. When you go to a gas station, do you look at the gas station that you're pulling into? Absolutely. This one right here, oh, one more, there you go. That one right there, 1005 uh, Hickson Pike, right there where Barton Avenue and Hickson Pike kind of meet right there together, you know what I'm talking about? Um, notice the windows. You can see it through the windows. It's clearly lit. Um, go to the next slide. Anybody know where this one's at? 23rd Street and 4th Avenue? What do you see all over the windows there? Posters. You can't see inside there. Go back to the, the, the previous one. Which one would you rather go into? This one or that one? Um, if you pull up to a gas station and go to the next one. Yep, this one's on. Uh, uh, oh, God, there's two sided. I was like, oh, where'd that one go? Okay. Um, again, all these uh, posters and stuff like that. Go on to the next one. If you see these type signs in uh, the gas station that you're pulling into, and this, uh, listen, I, I, I don't want anybody to look at this and say, 
A, he hates poor people. That's not what I'm saying at all, okay? Um, but what I want you to look at are the top signs. If they're advertising cheap beer all through the windows, then what kind of people are going to be going in to buy the cheap beer? The drunks, exactly. The, the, the crackheads, the, the people who only have 99 cents to buy those big 40-ounce beer. Um, so, consider the gas station that you're going into. Go on to the next one. If you see this, not get the deep dish. Pizza may be good, but what do you see written on there? Graffiti. Go on to the next one. What, what do you see on this one? What, what's on the windows? Bars on What does that mean? Um, eh, it might not be the safest place. Um, maybe some uh, shady looking people hanging out there or, or um, you know, there could be any number of things that you see about a, a gas station. And you know, I'm going to say, do I want to stop here? Again, this kind of goes back to the roadside safety thing. Keep more than just a quarter tank in your car. So you have enough gas to drive down to maybe the next one that's not as shady looking. Uh, next slide. If you do get stopped by the police, which none of you are, correct? Never. Tell your friends, though, if they get stopped by the police, next slide, you don't want to stop on a road that looks like this. Well, what if that's the only place to stop? Well, go up to the next slide. Well, if you come up to a place like this, you want to pull over right here? Probably not. That's not in Chattanooga, by the way. Um, that was actually in Chicago. Um, go on to the next slide. Be careful where you're pulling into. Be careful where you stop. If you get pulled over, or if somebody comes up behind you with blue lights on, and you're in a very dark, shaded area, and you don't really know if you really want to stop or not, turn your flashers on, slow down, wave at them, or uh, you know, do this, or you know, well, maybe not both hands, but you know, wave at them, or. Or you know, indicate to them somehow. Turn your your dome light on. Indicate to them somehow or another that you know they are back there, and that you don't have any intentions on running. Because then that's going to do what to the officer? Make him more nervous. So if the officer knows that you know that he's there, then he'll be calm as well, and he won't have to call for backup and guns drawn, and it just gets dirty because there's a lot of paperwork. You know, don't don't do all that. Um, but pull over at the right place. Chattanooga does have a few unmarked police cars. Not a whole bunch, but we've got some. Um, most jurisdictions do have unmarked police cars. If there's an unmarked police car that turns its lights on behind you, a good rule of thumb is the fewer lights you see, the more suspicion you need to raise. Because blue lights are actually kind of expensive. Uh, if you see just one blue light, no, it might be a little shady. Three or four, if you see them on the grill and the headlights and on the mirrors and stuff like that, then that's probably legitimate. Regardless, if there's an unmarked police car pulling in behind you and turning their blue lights on, then, again, turn your flashers on, don't want, wave them, whatever, and call 911 and say, I am at such and such location, again, know where you are, I am at such and such location, I've got a car behind me that has blue lights on, it looks like an unmarked police car. Can you check to make sure that's a valid uh, police officer? Because what happens? People get these blue lights, they put them in their car, and they see some older lady or, or some a younger lady driving down the road, and, and men too. Uh, they see somebody driving down the road, they're by themselves, and they think, I can take advantage of this one. And they'll buy a blue light. You can actually go to Amazon and buy a blue light. Uh, they're readily available. And, you know, put them in the car and and actually, we had this happen in Dalton uh, a couple of years ago. I don't know if any of you remember that or not, but he pulled over <coughs> multiple people and uh, robbed some. I think he raped one or two ladies. And uh, dearly just had his way because he had this blue light. Um, but the main thing is before you know for sure, don't stop. If dispatch comes back, it'll, it'll take a minute for the call taker to say yay or nay because they got to, you know, they'll top in the information in their little computer there. And, They'll have to get in contact with, with uh, the appropriate dispatchers dispatching for that channel where that location is and have to say, hey, do you have a police officer? And then have to call back. And so you can take two, three, what, four minutes maybe sometimes. So stay on the phone with them. 
And again, this officer is going to know that you see him if it's an actual officer because your lights are flashing, you waving, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but if the, if the dispatcher comes back and says, we don't have an officer in that area, then absolutely stay on the phone with the dispatcher. Okay, I'm turning right on to Main Street. Okay, now I'm turning left on to Market Street. I'm getting ready to get on Interstate 24 eastbound. Can you get somebody up there to meet me? Stay on the phone with them to keep yourself safe. Um, okay, going to the next slide. Uh, picking the right spot at a restaurant. How many of you actually go into the restaurant and sit me back to the door? I cannot do that. If I ever go out to eat with you, I will fight you for the seat that I can see the front door. Uh, I, I don't generally trust uh, my back to the door. Uh, go on to the next slide. This is your local Greasy Spoon Diner on Greasy Spoon Way. And you walk into the front door. Where are you going to sit? Somebody tell me. These are all booths, by the way. The tables and the red. I thought it looked pretty. Come on now. That's, that's a Greasy Spoon Where are you going to sit? I'm sorry? Back in the front door by the kitchen. Okay, so on the right or the left side? Or in the middle? In the middle, okay. Anybody else? All right. What's typically through a kitchen? I know stoves and stuff like that. A back door, exactly right. Why would you got a stove here next to the restroom? Well, number one, it's going to smell funny. <laughs> and people constantly going in and out. But what's not typically in a restaurant? A way out. Anytime you go into a restaurant or a church building, anywhere you go, look for that way out. So that way you don't become that victim. If this were me, I would probably sit in that back right top, the top right corner, with my back at the wall. Because I would want to see everybody that's coming in, and I could see my peripheral everybody's coming out of the kitchen. Um, that's just me personally. But pick a location where you're going to sit inside of a restaurant or where you're going to sit in church. Me, I sit on the end. And poor Zachary, he never gets to sit on the end. He's always like, man, I don't want to sit there. No, scoot over. I'm sitting on the end. He doesn't want that, so he scoots over. Um, and everybody knows, yeah, dad's going to sit on the end. Um, so be careful about where you're picking your spot. Let's go on to the next slide. How many of you exercise? I'm allergic to exercise. Okay. I get flush, my heart rate gets up, I get short of breath, and I just get, you know, exhausted. See, I'm allergic to this, I don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How many of you regularly exercise well, by going outside, walking, or running? How many of you do that by yourself? Most of us do. How many of you do 